Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and any time you build a logo or art, there is a purpose. And oftentimes, that purpose is for real-world use. That piece is either going to be on a flat surface or a round or curved surface. Well, aside from perspective, the flat surface is pretty easy. But what about the round surface? Think about putting your art on a coffee cup, can, or a bottle. How do you do it? Piece of cake. All we have to do is find our image, build a surface shape, and then map our shape to that surface. That, by the way, is what we're building. Let's get going and show you how. All right, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we are going to create a new document. We can do that two ways. First way is to go to File, New. Of course, you can see the second way. Let's hit Control N. With our new document window up, you'll notice that our new document will have a width of 1,000 points, a height of 1,000 points, a single artboard, and if we scroll down, we will be using the RGB color mode. All right, before we get started, let's address a few things. The first thing is we are using the Essentials Classic Workspace. To switch on over to the Essentials Classic Workspace, all you need to do is go to the top right-hand corner, select Switch Workspace, and select Essentials Classic. Now you don't need to use Essentials Classic. I use it because it is the easiest workspace for me to use. That being said, pick the workspace that works best for you. Next thing I want to mention is we are using Smart Guides to activate Smart Guides. All you need to do is go on over to View, select Smart Guides, or of course, Control U. Next thing I want to mention is that we are going to be using the bottom center of the page to highlight hotkey recommendations, key command recommendations, and of course, tips and tricks. On that same note, we're building this piece on a PC. So anytime we're making key command recommendations and you see the control key recommended, swap on over to the command key if you're using an Apple or Mac device. Once again, command equals control. Now with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is we are going to import our wine bottle image. Let's get started with that. We'll go File, Place, and we'll go ahead and find the image that we are using. Notice right here is wine underscore bottle dot JPG. If you want to use that same image, all you need to do is take a look at the link below. Now with that being said, you'll notice that our wine bottle is attached to our cursor. We'll do is we'll just click anywhere on our artboard and it is visible. Let's go ahead and center our piece horizontally and vertically. We're going to do that by using the align tool. Now I'll go ahead and select from the top bar, align center vertically, and then align center horizontally, just like that. Now, if you don't see the align tool on your top bar, all you need to do is go to window, align, or of course, shift F7. Now, once we've got our piece centered, let's go ahead and lock our bottle down. The way we do that is we go to Object, Lock, Selection, or of course, you can just enter Control 2. Notice that our piece is completely locked down from there. Now, if you ever want to unlock your wine bottle, maybe to move your art to a different piece or whatever, by all means do that. All you need to do is go back to Object and select Unlock All or Alt Control 2. All right, now that we've got that, let's go ahead and deal with our logo itself. The way we do that, let's go ahead and open up our image right here. This is a simple logo that I've created. If you want to use this same logo, by all means, you can. All you need to do is go to the link below. With that being said, all I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my selection tool is selected. I'll click on my artwork. I'll copy by going to Edit, Copy, or Control-C. And then I'll open up my wine bottle document and I'll go ahead and paste it right there. I can select control V to paste it or of course, edit, paste. Once I've got our logo on the page, let's go ahead and resize it. Now, when we're laying any logos or artwork on any piece, we want to scale our logo more or less to the same size of how we want to place it on the piece. With that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on my scale tool with my elements still selected. And then let's go ahead and scale down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my options are selected, scale corners and scale strokes and effects. 
And then I'm going to use my directional keys to scale my piece to fit the exact dimensions that I'm looking for. Once again, I'm going to press my down directional key to get it sized. Be sure preview is selected and let's press our down arrow. I think with this width, let's take it a little bit further down. Let's take it to about 43%. I think that looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now that we've got our artwork scaled, let's go ahead and open up our symbols window. We can do that a couple of ways. We can go to our right sidebar and select symbols, and we can open it up right there. I'm going to go ahead and close it. Or we can go to window symbols and click right there. We can also enter, as you can see, shift control F11. Once we've got our symbols window open, all we need to do is grab our selection tool and then click and drag our artwork right into the symbols window. Once it's in, you'll notice you get a list of symbol options. First thing we're going to do is we're going to rename it Wine Logo. And we'll switch the export type from Movie Clip to Graphic. And then we'll change the symbol type from Dynamic Symbol to Static Symbol. Once that's all set, let's click OK. And you'll notice that your artwork has been added to the symbols window. With that being said, we don't need our artwork on the page anymore, so we'll select that, we'll delete that. Notice it's still inside the symbols window. Let's go ahead and close our symbols window. And let's go ahead and get started on creating our 3D template. First thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab our rectangle tool, and then we're going to hover over the top part of the main cylinder of our bottle. I'm gonna go right here to about the top left corner right there, that looks pretty good. I'm going to click and drag down to the bottom right. Notice though that my top right hand corner is on that top right hand edge of our cylinder right there. Looks pretty good right there, let's go ahead and deselect. Next thing I wanna do is let's go ahead and cut our rectangle in half. What's the easiest way to cut our rectangle in half? Piece of cake. Let's go ahead and grab our pen tool, and then we're going to use the Shape Builder tool to do our thing. So let's do it. Let's grab our selection tool first. Let's click on our artboard to deselect. And then the next thing we're going to do is let's grab our pen tool. Let's hover over the top part of, of our rectangle until we get to the middle. There you go right there. We'll click and release. Let's hold our Shift key to ensure a perfectly vertical drag. And then let's hover down to the bottom center of our rectangle, just like that. Notice it says intersect. Click right there, and then let's grab our selection tool and let's go ahead and deselect. That's exactly what we want right there. What's our next step? With our selection tool still selected, let's go ahead and drag across both our rectangle and that line that we just created. Next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab our Shape Builder tool. Let me tell you about how the Shape Builder tool works. It creates unique shapes from elements selected. So with that line segment and our rectangle selected, anything I click on inside those shapes is going to create a new shape. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to hover over the left part of our rectangle. Let's go ahead and click on that. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's deselect our shape. And now let's go ahead and select the left rectangle. We'll click on that. Yeah, let's go ahead and delete it. Now that we've done that, we've got our rectangle exactly how we want it. However, Notice that on the bottom part of our bottle, a rectangle sticking out. That's not going to create that perfect perspective cone that we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix it. How? We're going to grab our direct selection tool. Let's do that right now. And then let's go ahead and click on the bottom right hand anchor point just like that. Using our directional keys, let's arrow that in until it matches the bottom right hand corner of the bottle cone itself. Looks pretty good right there, I think. Let's go ahead and deselect our shape. Excellent, I like that. Notice it doesn't have to be perfect, but let's be sure it is at least close to perfect. I think that's decent right there. Now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and give you a note. First of all, we never want a dark stroke or dark fill to our cone template shape. Why? Because when we take it to 3D, what it's going to do is it's going to go completely black and we're going to lose the ability to see our 3D shape. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's go ahead and click on our rectangle shape, and then let's go ahead 
and make our stroke transparent. We'll select our stroke. Let's go ahead and make it transparent. Now with our fill, we can always either make it white, that always works for me, or you can make it a light color so that you can see everything in and around it. Color really doesn't matter and you'll see why in just a second. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and grab our appearance window. There's a couple ways that we can grab our appearance window. The first way is to go to our right toolbar and click on appearance just right there. Well, let's go ahead and close that. The next way we can do it is we can go to our window menu. Let's click on that and we'll select appearance or of course, shift F6. Let's click on that. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and select the rectangle that we've created. Perfect right there. And then let's go ahead and make this thing 3D. How do we do that? Let's go ahead and grab effects from the bottom center there. And then let's go up to 3D Classic. Once we've gotten up there, let's click on Revolve Classic and check out what happens. That is slightly radical right there. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and set the position and let's get that angle just right. How are we going to do that? First of all, we're going to go to position and select front. You'll notice it is perfectly flat right there. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on our top element right there. Now we're going to change the angle of our cylinder. How? by either entering a number or of course using our directional keys. Notice if I hit the up directional key, check out what happens to our cylinder. Notice that you can see the bottom of the cylinder. That's not the direction we want. So let's arrow down and let's see how close we can get it to the perspective that we want. Let's keep going. Just a little bit more, I think we'll be good to go. I think right there, is just about perfect. So I took it to about 21 or 22%. Now that we've got our shape, all we need to do is map our artwork. In order to do that, all we need to do is make sure that our preview button is selected on the bottom part of our menu. And then let's go ahead and click on map art. Now that we've got that, check it out. Let's take a look at the surfaces. Take a look at our bottle. And you'll notice what is in red right there. That's the surface that we are looking at, or surface number one of three. We don't need to map anything to that. So let's go to our second surface. Notice when we go to the second surface, we're mapping our top surface right there. We don't need that. We're not going to be putting anything on that surface. So let's go to three of three. And straight away, you'll notice that we are mapping the round part of our cylinder. That is perfect right there. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and map our symbol. The way we do that is we'll click on symbol and we'll select wine logo. That's the piece we imported earlier. Let's click on that. And notice straight away that our wine logo is in there. Unfortunately, it's not on the front, it's on the side. So how do we fix that? All we need to do is click and drag our wine logo to the center part of the visible area. Notice in the window, it's recognizable by the lighter part of the surface. Once we've got that, notice that our logo is just a little bit too small. That is not a problem at all. As a matter of fact, once we've got it to center, that's pretty good right there. We can always scale it up. The way we do that is we can either hover over the top or any anchor point. In this case, we're gonna hover over the bottom center. We're going to click holding our shift key and let's drag out until we've got that size how we want it. I think that looks pretty good right there. We're going to release. I like that. That looks pretty good. One thing missing though is it's too far down. So again, let's move it up. We're going to click and drag that straight up and let's see what we can do. I think that looks pretty good right there. We'll release once again. I love exactly where that logo is. That's covering the entire surface right there. Now that we've got that, Let's start thinking about what we're going to do. Remember, we don't want to see our cone because that really doesn't need to show in our wine bottle. So how do we fix that? Let's go ahead and click on invisible geometry right there. Notice that it disappears. However, if we're still looking at our artwork, notice that it just doesn't look real. Why? Because there's no shading. So let's go ahead and shade our artwork. We'll click that button right there. That looks a lot better. And I'm pretty happy with the way that piece looks right there. So let's go ahead and click OK. And that's decent. However, there are a couple things missing. Notice how staggered the shading is. And notice that the shading is coming from the side. It's not coming from the center like it's showing on the bottle. So how do we fix that? Let's go ahead and do that. First thing we're going to do is let's click more options. And then notice where 
the light direction is. Take a look right here. So let's pull that up to the sort of the higher center, right, like that. I think that's a better bit of shading right there. Now, speaking of shading, you've got a couple of things on the surface. You've got plastic shading, and then you've got diffuse shading. These really don't do too much. I'll leave it at diffuse shading for now. That might work a little bit better. And the next thing we want to take a look at is notice how staggered our shading is. Notice the blend steps are at 25. Let's go ahead and double that to 50 and have a look at how it looks. Let's make sure our preview is selected in the bottom left hand corner here and let's write 50 in. We'll tab past that. That looks a lot better right there. We're just about done. The one thing that doesn't quite look right, however, is the color of the paper. Oftentimes when we're looking at something in real life, oftentimes the color of the shape or bleeds onto the color of the paper or the color of the logo itself. So we want to just change that shading a little bit to bring in that color. So how do we do that? Under shading color, let's click on that and let's select custom. Once we've got that, the default red comes up. Of course, we don't need that. So let's click on custom color right there. And then let's go ahead and hover around that yellow or orange family. I think that looks pretty good right there. And then let's click on a dark orange, maybe just about like that. I think that'll be pretty good. Let's click OK. That looks really good. Let's make it a hair darker and we'll call it a day. So we'll click there, pull that down so it's dark, but it's still just got a little bit of orange in it. Let's click OK right there. Oh, that looks excellent. All we need to do now, let's go ahead and click OK. Let's grab our selection tool. It's already selected. Let's click off our shape. And that is how you add a logo to a cylindrical shape. Now go ahead and experiment, but in our end, we are done. Nice job. Now that you know the basics, it's your turn. Go ahead and explore. As a matter of fact, you can make your own 3D shapes in Illustrator. Check out what I did here and see if you can make something to match. Tutorials, by the way, to follow. Now that we've covered that, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.